Famed for the beauty of its valleys and mountains, Wales also boasts a stunning coastline made up of sandy bays and beaches, steep cliff sides and a rugged rocky shoreline. Beneath the waves, Wales is home to a wealth of different marine species, both large and small, with a variety of marine ecosystems, meaning Wales is not just a nation of beauty, but also biodiversity. However, our unique marine ecosystems face a number of threats, one of which is invasive non-native species. Healthy biodiversity is where you've got a, a nice balance of the different animals and plants. So no one animal or plant is in excess in terms of its abundance. Each of those animals and plants are all in balance with each other. And that often results in a very high number of different animals, different plants, uh, all living in the community. The biodiversity of the ecosystem around the Welsh coast is, is incredibly diverse because we have so many different types of habitats. We've got the rocky and the sediment habitats. We've got some that are very wave exposed, some that are very sheltered, and then some within the estuaries, for example, have a lower salinity. And so the different communities are very diverse within Wales. The health of the uh, ecosystem depends largely on the sort of impacts that it, that it faces. Marine ecosystems face a variety of different impacts, from impacts that can be linked to certain conditions such as climate change, where there's increased storminess or increased adverse weather that do impact or create some um, damage to the habitats. Alongside that, there's also threats of invasive non-native species. And this could be brought in through human activities, where they'd be brought in through a variety of different mechanisms, such as ballast water or accidentally through aquaculture. Non-native species are species that are found outside of their natural range. Many cause little to no harm. However, some can cause impact to native species and also cause um, impacts to different kinds of infrastructure. And these are known as invasive non-native species. Invasive non-native species can be quite a problem. They can be a problem to the, to the environment in terms of the ecology, and they can be a problem economically. So an invasive species will potentially cause damage to biological communities. They can cause smothering. They can cause problems with the native species where they can't actually uh, reproduce or settle properly because of the, the presence of these non-native species. So ultimately, the, the risk is that the non-native species start to dominate that uh, habitat, that sort of ecosystem, and therefore you end up with a, with a loss of biodiversity as a result. In the marine environment, um, there is one particular species that has had an impact at many different regions, and that is the lionfish. Native to the Indo-Pacific, the invasive lionfish was first seen off the coast of Florida, but now can be found throughout the Caribbean down into Mexico, and it will take over quite a lot of the reefs in a very short period of time. As the numbers increase, the amount they feed also increases, and many of the fish species they feed on are commercially important, therefore having a big impact on the fisheries alongside the health of the many of the reefs that are found along those regions. An example of an invasive non-native species found in Wales is the American lobster. These lobsters are native to North America and Canada, and although uncommon in the UK, there have been individuals caught in Wales. They've been imported live to the UK since the late 1950s for consumption, and are thought to have escaped from holding tanks or been released into the wild by members of the public. American lobsters are larger and generally more aggressive than our native European lobster. They compete with the native lobster species for space and food and are highly fertile. More worryingly, they have the potential to interbreed and can carry a number of diseases which could transfer to our native lobsters and other crustaceans. A spread of these diseases to our waters could have a serious impact on local fisheries. Unfortunately, the American lobster is not the only example of an invasive non-native species in our waters. In Wales we have quite a few different non-native species, some of which have become invasive. 
So some obvious ones on, that you find on the seashore might be the Pacific oyster, which initially has been brought in for agriculture purposes, but then those can then breed uh, and then they become out of control in certain areas. Associated with other agriculture, some uh, animals have been brought in by accident, such as the American slipper limpet, which again has formed quite dense colonies, particularly in Milford Haven in South Wales. And these can cause smothering of the local wildlife through the production of mud and simply growing over other animals. The invasive non-native species can cause a decline in, in certain other species. So for example, we have the mussel fishery here in Wales and it's, it's quite vulnerable to smothering by the American slipper limpet or the um, carpet sea squirt, which would completely uh, disrupt those fisheries and to the result of probably not being a viable fishery at all. Some of the non-native species, the invasive ones, are fouling organisms, which is to be expected really. They quite often, the pathway that they come into the country is on, on boats, on barges, on perhaps aquaculture equipment, for example, and they could become a real nuisance at best and, and at worst cost a lot of money because of the, the cost of removing them or the cost of fuel as a result of those boats not moving through the water very efficiently. Once these invasive non-native species have arrived through whatever pathway and have settled and established, of course they'll then breed and expand their range as far as they can where the habitat suits. Non-native species have a number of pathways to move around the world and they typically move between areas with similar climate. So for example, those that we find in Wales and in Britain are often native in their homeland in, for example, Japan or the Northeast Pacific Ocean. One of the ways that they can travel is through ballast water. This is the water that large vessels carry within their hulls to stabilize those ships when they're crossing the ocean. So they pick up this water at one part of the, in the world and then they move wholesale across the ocean and then that water is emptied out as that vessel then takes on cargo. This allows all sorts of uh, creatures, plankton and small juveniles and so on, to move across the ocean unhindered. Those can then settle out in that new uh, environment and become uh, an invasive non-native species. Another way of transporting themselves would be as a sort of contaminant, if you like, on um, aquaculture species. So for example, the Pacific oyster. And there are a number of uh, non-native species that were traveled with those Pacific oysters. One of those is the American slipper limpet. And there are also some seaweeds which we think perhaps travel with those uh, oyster shells. Another pathway for these animals particularly, but some of the plants also, is through attachment to the bottoms of perhaps recreational yachts or smaller vessels. They travel quickly from place to place. And if the uh, animals or plants then recruit, where they reproduce when they've moved to another port, then they'll settle in that port and become a, a nuisance in that area. Because non-native species can be so damaging, it's really important that we try and reduce that, that impact on our uh, local native species. So the real key here is, is trying to identify the pathways in which they travel so that we can stop them coming in in the first place. We can all play a part in ensuring that invasive species don't spread further or no invasive species are introduced into an area where they've not been before. And biosecurity is one way. So we're traveling from different water bodies. It's important to make sure that you firstly check your equipment, clean your equipment or any clothing that you've used and make sure it's dried properly before then transporting to somewhere else. Because this is one way that inns are easily moved between location and location. So there are various procedures that are carried out these days, for example, changing ballast water at sea, sterilizing and cleaning any equipment that's moved from place to place. And this is a really important means of not letting them cross the oceans in the first place. Once they're here, as I say, it's very difficult to then control them. Our best chance if you want to control any or to stop any further establishment of an invasive non-native species is to be able to identify what we've got, where we've got them. If we find some new animals or plants 
that we've not seen before, then that's a good chance we have to control those. To identify them, there are very varied groups of animals and plants, and of course they're not familiar to us quite often because they are from somewhere else. But there are various resources online that we can use to, to help identify those. So we can collect those records of different animals and plants through uh, using iRecord, for example, or, or iNaturalist. And it's also very useful to uh, send a, a, a note to Natural Resources Wales or to your local wildlife trust, um, because that means we can then act on that if we feel there's an opportunity to either confirm those species or to in eradicate them, then that's something we can do. Thank you.